So I thought, so this guy Shmoo, the actual guy Shmoo, I'll keep this very short, he likes to pick on me because I'm kind of gullible. Um, once upon a time he told me that chickens were hermaphrodites. And because um, I was asking, hey, why are there so few roosters and so many female hens in a, you know, on a farm? And I didn't realize until I saw the American Dad episode where they grind up all the roosters in the chicken feed that that's what actually happens. I, I learned agriculture from American Dad. And um, <laughs> since American Dad wasn't around in the late 90s when he told me this story, he said, it's like Jurassic Park where when they hatch, they just, you know, one of them kind of elects themselves as male and the rest are all female. And I thought, that's the most fucking amazing thing ever. So I start telling people this. I go to work and I tell everyone in the office, you know, chickens are hermaphrodites and they elect a male. It's awesome. And then you kill them and another one comes around and they're like, I, I, I think you're wrong. And I'm like, <laughs> bullshit. And so after like a week, Shmoo finally says, you know, dude, I, I totally made that up. <laughs> Dick. Um, anyway, so this is a story about how we um, lost an eye. Um, and just to be clear, um, that's me with a microscope. Uh, the sun's in the air, and I'm looking at a hard drive platter, which happens to be very shiny. Um, it's really fucking bright. So, um, anyway, that joke fell flat, so we're going to keep on trucking. <laughs> Who are we? Uh, <laughs> uh, Deviant, you want to say a few words about yourself? I'm a value-sized bucket full of free fun, and you should find me outside this talk. Woo! <laughs> Can you supersize me later? <laughs> Um, I'm uh, Bruce Potter, uh, founder of the Shmoo Group, and I do other stuff. Um, I do run a small consulting company in Central Maryland, and just to pimp myself out, we're hiring developers, so feel free to email me later. Um, and Shane? Hi, I'm Shane Lawson. Um, I work for... Hi, thanks. I work for Tenacity Solutions. Uh, my entire executive staff is sitting right here staring at me. Uh, I think we're hiring. <laughs> yes, we're hiring. <laughs> That's the whole talk, we're done. Um, yeah, thanks, bye. All right, so um, you should go sign up for Hack Fortress, like I'm not fucking around. Um, if you want out of here afterwards, there'll be sign-up sheets and you have to sign up before you leave the room. It's, it's, it, it's tomorrow only. Um, today is just free play, tomorrow it starts at 10 a.m. So you can sign up for a later s s time slot if you think 10 a.m. is too fucking early. Uh, feel free to sign up for the, like, the noon one. Um, what are we doing here? So. Um, a long, long time ago, I worked for this company called Fort Knox, and OCS, not KNOX. That's how you had to answer the phone because no one understood what the hell you were saying. Um, in Anchorage, Alaska, and we were going to do credit card processing. Uh, we we're going to do set processing and potentially even do digital bearer uh, settlement stuff. Um, and we were building these uh, big ass uh, transaction processing servers and scattering them around the country. Um, it turns out Anchorage isn't near anything um, <laughs> except the water, and. Um, so we were a little worried that if we had these servers that had all this information, this is pre-PCI, so we were just going to store everything in the clear. Um, <laughs> this, there's a lot of subtlety to that statement. Um, anyway, uh, and we were worried that bad guys were going to come and try to bag our, our boxes. And we thought, hey, you know, what we'd really like to do is have a way to remotely destroy a drive. Just make the drive go away. And we wanted complete goddamn drive destruction, like a pile of slag. Like our first thought was thermite. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of people's first thought because it's fun, um, but there's some critical issues with thermite. Uh, it's self-oxidizing, so it likes to go through things. Uh, whatever's below it, gravity keeps going. So um, we, uh, we really wanted, though, a solution that uh, you know, would make the entire drive go away because we were worried that even if there were um, a few bits of uh, information left on the drive, if they were the right bits, they could be worth a lot of money. Uh, so for those that don't know about something like digital bearer certificates, this is the idea, it's the same idea as Bitcoins, just not nearly as psychotic. Um, that <laughs> someone explained Bitcoins to me the other night in a bar and I thought it was a joke. Um, <laughs> Like, I understand the concept that these bits are worth money, but like the actual process and all the weird static values that are associated, like every six weeks this happens, and every two years this happens. I'm like, oh, we just pulled values out of the air, I see, and we called it a currency. Excellent. <laughs> um, so, wow. You were all thinking it. This is crazy shit, but everyone's wearing a t-shirt, so it must be all right. Um, anyway, uh, we wanted to make sure that if there were $10 million in 
bearer certificates or Bitcoin, someone that wasn't willing to spend $10 million to see if they could recover the right string of bits. So uh, we wanted the drive to go away. Unfortunately, we were a little too busy trying to also get venture capital and burn through it all in the form of not doing anything. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, because that was the way the end of the 90s really worked out. It's like, hey, we got money. Go back to playing Quake 3. Um, and it didn't work out. So one day we're sitting around my house after ShmooCon in the snowstorm, because it always fucking snows during ShmooCon. Um, and Deviant was there, and Shane was there, and a few other people were there, and I was telling them about this little thing that we tried to do. And we decided, hey, you know, um, maybe we should take this idea and do something with it for DEF CON. So the, the rules of the game that we were trying to do up in Anchorage, and we continue to carry forward today, um, and which is why you're all here, is destroying a drive in the following fashion. One, you have a one new server. Uh, you have one U above and below to install whatever the hell you want in the rack. So concrete, uh, asbestos, you know, things like that. Um, when you fire the hard drive, you have 60 seconds to destroy it. You must not set off fire suppression, smoke sensors, seismic sensors, because we're near banks. Um, must not harm other system in, in, the, in the rack, and you must not harm the humans that happen to be nearby when you're <laughs> lighting off your thermite or magnesium or something like that. So we undertook this talk in an attempt to see if we could realize my, my private little dream of destroying a goddamn hard drive. Um, and so we will get to uh, the various methods that we use, but needless to say, we accepted the challenge. <laughs> 4chan, fuck the world. Um, so someone in the audience is thinking, hey, why don't you just use some fucking crypto, you jerk? Uh, and, and you're right, <laughs> we could have done that. <laughs> Like, that's, that's a totally valid response. And I, so, um, first of all, we wanted this to be a spectacle, and crypto's not really a spectacle. You ever watch a demo of a crypto system? It's really exciting. <laughs> it's encrypting right now. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> that's it. Woo! So, woo! Woo! Yeah, it's always good to have the redneck roar once in a while in the middle of the talk to wake up all the people. Um, <laughs> was that pretty goddamn loud? What? Triple Dez. That's not really redneck. Dez is kind of redneck, you know. Uh, one time pad written on the side of your pinto is redneck. So, um, <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so there's some reasonable crypto solutions out there. There's some various open source stuff. Um, there's Opal and other self encrypting drives that you can use. Uh, the, the issue is really comes down to zeroization. If you're going to zeroize out the data, uh, or zeroize out the key, I mean, the idea is you have this encrypted data with some very large key, and when you want the data to go away, you just throw the key in the trash. And you just have to make sure that you throw the key in the trash in an effective enough fashion that it can't be recovered. Um, what's kind of a bummer about that is if you don't do it, then all they need to do is recover 256 bits or 2,000 bits of data, um, and then they can decrypt the entire drive, versus if we're successful, um, there's absolutely nothing left except powder. So, um, you know, and, and it stands to reason then, if you're going to use an encrypted drive, you could just go after the bits like the little, you know, TPM or whatever, and we could incinerate that, which would prove to be remarkably easy compared to what the hell we tried to do. So, um, <laughs> there's various drive destruction standards. Um, anyway, there are drive destroyers. Um, this one that DT I thought was bringing down to the con, but I haven't seen it yet, um, is the uh, low end version of a drive destroyer. First, you have to degauss the drive. Um, which has varying amounts of effects on modern day drives. Um, and then there's this little an anvil thing in the middle and one little point that, as Shane calls it, makes a little hard drive taco um, because it puts 12,000 pounds of force in the middle of the drive and the drive kind of folds up and shatters, uh, which for most of the standards that are out there qualify as drive destruction. Um, but if you ask someone what this was and you hold up a broken drive that's been shattered by one of these, they're going to say a hard drive. Um, it turns out you can get things that you can hold up pieces and go, what was this? And people are going to say a Pinto. Um, and this is an $80,000 drive in <laughs> disintegrator. That's what they call it on the website, a drive disintegrator. <laughs> it was like, check, that's add to cart. Um, $80,000. I paid in bitcoins. Um, it's coming. <laughs> I, I've been mining for weeks just to save it up for this drive disintegrator. Um, this thing will eat laptops, small children, uh, farm animals, uh, male chickens, as it turns out. Um, <laughs> will it shred? Yeah, you can put a blend tech into this thing and it'll shred the blend tech. Like, I, <laughs> I assure you. So, there are some issues with this um, cost. 
they're kind of expensive even in Bitcoins. Um, unless anyone wants to attack Mt. Gox, we could drive the value of Bitcoins through the roof for five minutes so I can buy my drive disintegrator. Um, gonna keep turning that, I'm gonna, there's gonna be hit out on me by the, like, the entire Bitcoin cabal later. It's gonna be great. It'll be in uh, Brasilia 4 later. Um, Effectiveness, uh, there may still be usable bits, especially the ones that make the little hard drive tacos. You're gonna get little pieces of hard drive and there may still be data on there that's uh, of some use. Um, and form factor, that's about 40U um, and three cabinets. So that was a little larger than our winning, uh, uh, the winning uh, submission that we were looking for. So uh, real quick, uh, yeah, you should go sign up for Hack Fortress. Um, <laughs> For anyone that was in my uh, uh, Logan and I's talk on hacking game servers a couple years ago that every single slide transition uh, had stupid noises in between, I'll, you should thank me, I decided not to do that this year. So, Holy but I, <laughs> they're like, yes, because that was the most annoying thing ever. But it, it was one of those jokes, it's like Family Guy, it, it's funny, and then it's not, and then after a couple more minutes of Conway Twitty singing, it gets funny again. Um, <laughs> that's basically what we were doing. Um, so, anyway, um, Someone's grabbing their knee in agonizing pain, like, uh, anyway. Not a lot of Family Guy adult swim watchers on the, in the audience tonight. So, anyway, industrial, this really is not an important slide. Uh, surely there's a better way. And what I want to get into, we're going to talk about the specifics of what we tried, uh, so you can learn from our, uh, I'll call them mistakes. So, um, about the ways that we did this. Uh, I don't know if you were planning on doing this slide, but I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to hand it over to Dean. Is that all right? Yeah, that's what all I thought right. was going to that's why you put my name on it, so I can talk about myself in the third person. Or he can talk about himself in the third person. Get on with it. Get on, dick. Um, <laughs> so just to be clear, some of what we did is in this light gray area from a legality perspective. Uh, Deviant will touch on that gently, very gently in a supersized way. Um, dangerous. Uh, we tried to exercise as much care as we could. There were certainly times when we thought something really bad was going to happen and we're filming it and nothing occurred. Um, so it was actually shockingly undangerous at times, which is really embarrassing, especially in front of your own children. They're like, like, go stand way on the end of the driveway. And they do, and we get something up, we're like, okay, we're ready. And we do it, they're like, have you done it yet? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we did it. it... <laughs> Sorry. Go, go inside. Like, I'm, I need to hide. Um, pseudoscience, we definitely made some gold, I contend but nobody else seemed to believe me. Except I, I did trade it in on the Mt. Gox currency market and I had my Bitcoins from the gold that I alchemized out of the hard drive. Um, <laughs> so we, we initially split this up into three areas, uh, incendiary, which was deviance um, area of focus, chemical, which was Shane, and physical, which is mine. We're gonna go through the efficacy of each of these. Um, and it turns out that we really had the most success in a fourth surprise area that involves Strippers and blow. Uh, anyway. <laughs> All right. How are we doing? Can you hear me? So yes, as Bruce pointed out, incendiary. It actually, it, it's, I got pretty fucked because there's only two ways you can do this. One is thermite, which doesn't, you know, play nice with anything or doesn't play nice with ceramics, which there's a lot of in circuitry and hard drive platters. So that really much just kind of leaves you with explosive blow, blow the crap out of everything, which fails miserably at all the conditions we set for this situation. But I did my best to do some research so I could be up here and talk to you fine people. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to tell you a lot about this research because I like my butthole and I don't want to be accused of helping you how to make bombs. So I'm not going to say, you know, a lot of chemical, com you're not going to get a lot of real chemical formulas. But that's what you proclaim. <clears throat> oh, God. Sulfur, things, what? No, don't do that. So it's going to kind of go like this. And if you are a smart person, you can figure out how things are and how things go and how things might be for you. So there's this stuff. It's on the inner tubes. We like it because we have guns. It goes boom if you hit it with this. We like to use it because we like guns and booms. If you put it far, far away and put a lot of it out there, it goes boom even bigger. That's really fun. There are some people who put way too much of it in one situation and they make the news when booms are too loud. You don't want to be those people. <laughs> you don't want to be some guy with a dump truck in like Montana or whatever that was. But there's also this stuff. You think it's the other stuff. It's not the same stuff. You can find this stuff. Why is it not the same stuff? Because it goes boom with this. It also goes boom with this. 
That's a much smaller impact, a smaller initiating charge, as the feds who are listening to this talk will know. It also means things like this in the, you know, like the Hollywood industry and films and cinema. That also makes that other thing go boom. This is hard to get. It's illegal for you to get. There's an instructable online to make your own. <laughs> you know. Don't, don't do that. Don't initiate one charge into another into another, because that's, that's what we call bad. That's what we call dis like massive things that you weren't planning. If you do that, people will want to have a conversation with you. <laughs> the conversation will take place someplace you don't want to be. <laughs> so we were talking about how to do this with a server rack. How do you install this kind of incendiary, boomiary thing in a server rack? You know, if you want to be legal, if you don't want to be in places you don't want to be, the only way to legally use things that go boom like that ordered on the internet is to shoot them with a round. So you're basically taking a server rack and affixing a live round to it. I don't really want to work in a server environment where there's a fully charged spring on the, on the freaking hammer like rifle at all times. But it doesn't violate federal law. <laughs> and it's because you are still initiating this server destruction charge with a round. The moment you do it in electronically, that's a problem. So remember, don't initiate stuff with batteries or cell phones, etc. That's, that's bad. People will talk to you in a place you don't want to be. We've all moved away from IDE hard drives in the past, we do not want to transition to IDE hard drives. IED hard drives, yes. Oh, see, I fucking flubbed the line. Thanks, whiskey guy. That's my only Photoshop of the fucking talk, my IED hard drives. Ah, well, that and the ready.gov thing. So, yeah, see, this is bad because it doesn't fit our model. If you destroy things <laughs> like this... Oh. Whoa, the feds are cutting us off. Oh, no. What happened? What is this? Hey, hey, thank you. They, they let us back in. Yeah, this is, it is very bad for your, your room. It is very bad for your desk. You will probably lose your snacks. 23B is the only one who makes out in this entire equation. So what have we learned today, kids? We have learned that it's possible to do incendiary things or boomiary things to your drives. Um, you do not want the emergency crews to come out. We do not want you going home and you know, burning shit down. We do not want you sent to a freaking ER. We do not want you making new friends. <laughs> At least not if you're gonna blame us for it. If you really think this is up your fucking alley, there are plenty of resources online if you wanna be stupid. So yeah, have fun with that. Do not blame us. It was not our fault. Uh, don't, don't try this at home. Thank you. Yeah, I can't follow that. So, moving right along. I don't have any great pictures or anything. The whole point Talk of the Talk into the mic. How's this? Better. Thank All right. You. What? Fuck you. <laughs> So the point of the chemical destruction, I was going to spray a mist that goes into the platters, eats it away, you end up having a big bu bubbling pile of what used to be a platter and probably some burnt fingertips. So um, it didn't really work. You should go sign up for Hack Fortress. <laughs> you may have seen this before in an earlier slide presentation. Um, so the mechanics of this whole thing, I had submersible pumps and lots of acids and lots of other stuff and power and everything and there was going to be arm switches it was going to spray this great thing in there and it was going to go over the top of it and we were going to market it and sell it and I'll be really rich uh, it didn't happen that way either so um, <clears throat> one of the main things there yeah <laughs> cobalt doesn't react with dick um, we tried really hard <laughs> We mixed a lot of stuff that we shouldn't have mixed together. <laughs> it was a bad idea. Um, and yeah, I don't want to be on a list. I don't want to make any of those new friends. I don't know where the hell that picture came from, but it creeps me out every time I see it. <laughs> so my other reservations, I don't want to end up like this. 
um, really, this is, this is how we set it up. That's, that's the table on two sawhorses. It's really this tall, too, so it's very safe. safe. Jesus! What? Yeah, Wait, shut up. Gonna work? <laughs> there we go. Could you hey. use your outside voice, please? Yeah, try turning it. They're, they're turning me <laughs> off. Man's keeping me down. I just want to point out the safety equipment here. There is some Arm & Hammond baking soda um, <laughs> to neutralize any acid that we got on Shane's eye. And um, I, I, I think that's it. That's all the safety equipment we had. Oh, we, we had uh, metal containers for the acid that we were trying to use to melt metal with. <laughs> So this whole process, actually, if you look over there, that little white spot, that's from the, uh, the acid we spilled on the table. Um, a lot of this was, was a bad idea. The root beer was okay, though. Um, so how do I know it didn't work? Well, because it didn't work. Um, <clears throat> this slide's in the wrong spot, by the way. Yeah. Okay, well, keep going. You put it there. What no, the you put it there, Dick. This is your slides. <laughs> you must have moved it with all of your Hack Fortress slides. Um, anyway... You should go sign up for Hack Fortress. Bruce also has a problem with altitude sickness today, oh, so you geez. might want to be forgiving. That bike ride. Could you just keep going? They're waiting he, for he you. He pushed out on it, yeah, oh. just to let you know. Um, that's what two years of training gets you. Uh, so we let this stuff soak with, with a pretty low-grade acid, and eventually it made a little tiny hole. It really didn't do much. So some of the chemicals in use, they're corrosive. Um, we really did mix a lot of stuff. Some of it may have not been acid. I'm not really sure. You get um, a little confused about acids and bases. You know, it's not really that important, though. I really um, give a shit. We didn't research this anyway, as I was told. Um, so, so, so in fairness, we did try um, uh, phosphor. Uh, so most of the, the aluminum platters are made of, um, to cut to the chase, aluminum. Um, and the aluminum will be dissolved by uh, phosphoric acid. And you can buy phosphoric acid in the form of um, uh, battery acid, basically. So we tried to use that. We watched it for a while. It was pretty exciting because we mocked it and it didn't do anything. You know, we thought maybe screaming at it like the little red the bobs of goo or whatever and make yeah. it angry. No, it didn't work. Um, that is uh, something different. That's, uh, That's, that was the uh, hydrochloric acid low dose. It didn't do much. It's etching solution, basically. Yeah. That also did next to nothing. Well, that's what made the little hole. Oh, it did. But the hole was actually where you had scratched it. Yeah, I scratched it to prove that it really was a metal platter yeah. because you didn't believe me. Yeah, I didn't. Um, so there's some more acid doing nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing. You're, you're sitting in the Penn & Teller Theater looking at a slide of nothing happening. Um, just to be clear, this is what, this is what DEF CON's gone to right now. Um, <laughs> And, and you're laughing about it. Okay, next. So, I, <laughs> awkward. Have you ever been, you ever feel like you've been had? <laughs> yeah. That was when he came in the room. Um, <laughs> keep going. So there's some more of it. Not working. So yeah. <laughs> also not in focus, but that's cool too. That's because I took that picture. Um, I'm sure someone in this crowd is going to say, oh, you guys did it totally wrong. We know this other thing that would have worked great. Fine. Fuck you. <laughs> um, afterwards, and after we get around to what you can do for us later and what we'll do for you if you do something for us later, um, you can contact us. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're so belligerent. I know. Wait till he gets drunk. <laughs> he gets all cuddly. Speaking of that... It's your turn. Oh, is this? Oh, okay. Yeah, these are your boxing gloves. Awesome. Oh. Deviant's running back and forth across the stage. He's our ball boy. I wondered where you went. Woo! Deviant's the ball boy. <laughs> um, yes, there you go. Um, so the idea with physical destruction was we were going to grind stuff down, uh, hence the term physical destruction. Um, it, it, we'll just kind of show a couple videos here. So... Um, that's me, Shane's filming. That's why it's all jittery, like he's on meth. Um, that's a uh, hole Coke, saw. actually. A hole saw designed to cut holes in sheetrock. That's not sheetrock. Um, yeah, yes, yes, I am serious. Because, look, dude, we're in my garage. I'm like, what do I have? I'm like, I got a hole saw. All right. Whoa. 
That's a 3,000 RPM on my drill press and me pulling down and um, it's hot, as it turns out. Really fucking hot um, and absolutely uh, nothing happens, which should not be surprising to uh, most people in the room. Again, you're watching this video. Um, it it mm. kind of scarred the surface and it burned the wood underneath in case the hard drive was made of wood. Uh, we would have had <laughs> massive success. Um, next thing we tried was a spade bit. Same, same basic premise. <laughs> Drill press at 3,000 RPM. Using the right tool for the job, that's my motto. Um, I'd like to point out, we did have safety goggles on for yeah, this whole process. Yeah, and gloves too. Gloves, just in case something exploded. Um, <laughs> there's sparks, sparks flying off it. I got news for you, those sparks are not coming from the hard drive case, <laughs> they're coming from the drill bit. Uh, so there's the drill bit, you'll see it. Oh, Shane's doing some meth, everything's cool. There it is. It's annealed, and the points have been taken off. Uh, no, no, wait, wait, come on. Wait for head. it. There we go. Yay. Yeah. It, it didn't look like that 30 seconds earlier. Um, so, uh, yeah, right tool for the job. Um, yeah, so. So we did try that just to prove that it would work, because we were suspect of that whole process. We did drill an actual hole through the platter and then decided that this was all going to be a bad idea and it wouldn't work anyway, so. You know what we use? We use cobalt-tipped uh, drill bits, because uh, cobalt is um, fucking strong. Um, we discovered that non reactive as our friend and our foe, cobalt. Um, come back, Zinc, come back! Um, <laughs> the five people that got, like, the Simpsons season three reference. Um, yay, yes! <laughs> yeah, thank you. We're all old. Um, this is slightly more appropriate tool. This is a metal grinding disc designed to grind through metal um, at 3,000 RPM on a drill press. Again, wearing, I think I've given up on the gloves at this point. I've decided that nothing is gonna fly off and rip my fingers off. Um, there's a lot of smoke with this, um, mostly from the shit that's on the outside of the drive case. Uh, absolutely really nothing happens. It, it scratched it really well. Um, and that's about, oh, and it burned the wood. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of smoke. It's kind of hard to pick up on this crappy meth head camera, but... Um, That's because it's not an iPhone. Oh! Yeah. So, <laughs> wow, you just burned yourself, man. That was... Anyway. Yeah, um, well, you know. Brings up an issue. Uh, we did have so time and size constraints, um, and also cash. It's really hard to buy stuff at Home Depot <laughs> that will make a hard drive go away. Um, and that was kind of our deciding. We didn't want to have to get licenses for anything, and we didn't want to have to get overly exotic where I was spending tens of thousands of dollars to buy really expensive uh, drills and things like that. So uh, we decided to move on. And while we're sitting at Home Depot, literally in front of the uh, toilet section, because uh, <laughs> we're examining all the chemicals that are in all the toilet uh, uh, unstopper things to get all the poop out, and um, <laughs> trying to see if anything in there might react with metal. They make um, Drano now that gets hot in the drain. It's cool, it comes in a, in a box and a bag and it's got two parts, it's like a, it's a binary liquid and you pour it in your drain and it gets really hot. I shit you not. Does that seem like a good idea to you? <laughs> like do you really wanna pour stuff into the innards of the house that you own that gets really hot and burns the hair off the inside of your pipes? If you do, please film it. Um, <laughs> So we're sitting there looking at the Drano, examining the contents of the Drano and realizing it's all the same shit, just different prices. Um, and what we thought, hey, what if we uh, threw this stuff in some sort of ionic solution and ran a battery charge through it and maybe we could see if we could deplate. So uh, real quick primer, um, and this is later, but there's two types of hard drive platters that we found out. Um, and hard drive manufacturers aren't really, um, I'll say, transparent about telling you what's in the hard drives that you buy. Uh, some hard drives are ceramic, which is basically glass and it has a, a, a very thin layer of uh, some polymer on top and then it's got the actual uh, plating, the metallic plating of the drive and then on, underneath that it's basically clear glass. Um, the other ones are some sort of aluminum alloy usually or some sort of metal alloy for the most part, it's aluminum and other stuff. Um, those are, are not ceramic um, but they still have some sort of plating on them. So we thought, hey, we're gonna deplate these critters. So what do we need? We need a power source. Um, I like to think we use a Tesla coil but in reality we use a a couple battery. of car batteries, um, <laughs> some leads, and uh, so I, I told my son, hey, go inside and get the salt, and I thought he'd come out like a Morton salt thing. No, he brought out the good salt grinder off the dining room table. I'm like, yeah, good enough. <laughs> hey, Shane, can you clean that off with some phosphoric acid? Sure. 
sure. So um, here's what happened. Um, we've got, um, actually what you can see here is it, the hard drive deplating around the uh, uh, negative electrode in the solution. Um, and uh, around the, the positive electrode, it's deplating a little bit, but we're able to move the um, electrode around and um, actually remove pretty much everything off of it. And when we're done, um, it, we can remove it from both sides and you can see straight through the drive. So that's pretty effective. Um, and this is the first drive we cracked open and this is what we started playing with. This actually turns out to have been a problem uh, because we spent a lot of time with the drive platters from that drive trying to understand how to make that go faster, how to, how to be able to get to 60 seconds. And we're like, well, we need fluids that conduct electricity better and we need more juice and we need bigger electrodes. So um, we had 12 volts out of a what initially was a, a Radio Shack um, power, DC power generator. So then we went with um, instead uh, two car batteries and um, garden stakes and some jumper cables. So this is decidedly entering the realm of maybe not a good idea. Um, <laughs> Anyone ever welded with car batteries before? Yeah. yeah, you can do it. We were trying not to, really hard. Um, that's all that happens. So that we, we really thought, like, we, like I had, this is where I had the kids literally, like, in another school district. Like, they, were, they had left the area. Um, and uh, we deplated at about the same rate that we deplated with a 13-volt, um, 19-amp uh, DC power supply from Radio Shack. So... Uh, this was much more nerve-wracking, uh, and someone's going to say, "Hey, you should use larger." Oh shit! You should use larger electrodes. Uh, we did. We actually ground one of those down on a grinding wheel and put it right on it, and it really didn't make that much of a difference. So, um, so we play around, play around, play around, and we were trying to figure out ways to engineer like jamming electrodes in from the side and how to flood using its pumps, how to flood the saline solution and all this stuff. Um, we cracked open the next drive, and I went to deplate it just to prove that we could do it. And absolutely nothing happened. And we cracked up another drive, and absolutely nothing happened. And we discovered that the only drive we had that was ceramic was the first one. And everyone else that we had was aluminum. So we had all these drive platters, and this solution engineered, and he came over with all these pumps, and we're all excited because we're going to have this all done. And no, we're not. We're we were going to have an actual demo. Yeah, we're not going to have any kind of demo at all. So they don't deplate the same way. Um, but what they do do. Dude, <laughs> Jesus, come on. Drink. Is they melt. So um, we decide, God bless it. Jesus. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand over here and give a talk. So um, what we did is uh, we took, first we took propane, um, and this will not be a surprise to anyone, but uh, the propane, holy shit, I can't make this play. There it is. Um, Propane and propane accessories. That's my Texas accent right there. It sounds like my normal voice because I can't do it. So, um, this is a really shitty video off frame. I was looking at something else, sorry. <laughs> Shane was doing a line of coke for that one. Um, so this will melt. I sped it up because it took about a minute and a half to do it. Um, and it turns into a little melty blob of aluminum, which shouldn't be surprising. What's interesting is uh, the curry point, which is the point at which the stuff that they use to plate the hard drives uh, becomes non-magnetic. Um, the curry point for the material that they use is about 800 degrees centigrade. So uh, propane burns at about 2,000 centigrade. So in reality, as much as that drive melted, well before it melted, the surface temperature of the drive had reached the curry point and it was no longer magnetic. So again, the drive was destroyed and you can destroy a drive with heat very effectively. The problem is it's not a very good demonstration. It's like watching crypto. Hey, we just reached the curry point. <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting when it gets to the curry point, you know? Um, I did that twice now. We're gonna go for a third later. Um, so what happened? So we, um, we tried to get spinning, flying, molten aluminum. That was actually a goal of ours. Um, you could take a power supply out of a PC and uh, plug in a hard drive, and then if you short circuit the green wire to any black wire on the power supply, it's on, and it'll light up all the 12 and five volt uh, power out of the power supply. So um, I had an old PC, I pulled it out and did that, and uh, it actually works. Had people done that before? I, it was a neat little trick, green to black, and you can just turn on the power supply. Um, and so we uh, went in and we took the top off a hard drive, and then we took some uh, propane torches, several of them, and held them down against the hard drive platter. And 
nothing happened. And we waited, and we waited, and we waited. And about five minutes later, we, we gave up. Like, the drive was clearly hot, the heads had melted, and were like etching a little hole in it, but the hard drive was still spinning, and uh, nothing had melted. So the actual force of the 7200 RPM drive um, and the amount of time that's actually underneath the flame, it cools very rapidly. The uh, flame doesn't really have the ability to hit um, the uh, surface of the, the platter to the ground effect of the spinning platter. And uh, we couldn't burn it while it was on, which was really unfortunate because we thought, if we can get a video of spinning, flying, flaming aluminum all over my driveway, that would be really cool. Um, <laughs> it didn't happen. So what do we go for next? We went for map gas. Uh, anyone ever use map gas? Yeah. <laughs> People are like, yeah, that shit's hot. <laughs> um, <laughs> that didn't get shit. That didn't get a goddamn thing. Burn my finger on my butt and nobody laughs. That's because um, it wasn't funny. It's 1,000 degrees centigrade hotter than propane. Um, what's cute is it's not made in North America anymore and you can't buy it. Uh, you can buy map replacements that are basically like it, but it's basically acetylene. Um, mixed in with some other good stuff, and it burns hot very efficiently. But the only plant that made it shut down in 2008. Um, and the stuff that we had fell off the back of a truck. Um, that's what my neighbor said. He's like, it fell off a truck. And I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, I don't really care. I don't want to even know like, how you got this stuff. Um, what? Oh, God damn it. This is what, never mind. I'm not even going to go there. Um, how many people is this your first DEF CON? You're experiencing like a DEF CON 7 talk right about now. <laughs> Someone go get priest. Um, it sounds like your garage. Oh, I thought you meant like you could hear acoustically. Like it sounds like. Is that my Mazda? Shane kept asking, why are you playing this heroin music? Um, apparently it wasn't fast enough for the method he was doing. So... So uh, we decided we're going to hit this thing with map gas. Um, unsurprisingly, when we speed it up, it's actually a lot faster. Um, <laughs> Did you just say that? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so um, this shit burned the hole right in the drive. Um, and actually, uh, yeah, it goes really fast. Now Shane's really swinging out here. Um, it turns into a slag pile of aluminum. Um, it really just destroys. Things catch fire periodically. The, you see like the heads glowing red periodically. Yeah, over um, by the heads there's plastic that's melted all over it. Um, it all the solder smokes up at once. <laughs> I also awesome. like how the video is upside down. Um, <laughs> this is, yeah. Anyway, we ran out of map gas. So the map that fell off the truck was all gone. Um, <laughs> so, Madame Curie uses Sarah Palin. Um, ah, see, this, it shows up fine. This was him. I think he photoshopped it himself. No, I um, You betcha. So um, the idea that we came up with, um, and, and I'm looking really excited about doing this, was um, affixing a uh, glow plug for uh, like a motorbike to the end of a uh, propane torch and then use a servo to open said propane torch and then lighting the um, propane torch remotely with an Arduino and an Ethernet connection. By God, the, the most difficult way ever to light a propane torch. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot of effort that went in to, you know, code, stepping the servo and everything, and it was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And I said, I don't know how the hell this is going to work, but okay. And then I got a call the next day that said, you know. This shit ain't going to work. This, um, is, this isn't going to work. I give up. I do want to finish this, though, because I'd actually like, because you had to sit through this talk, uh, for you to be able to go to a website and click a button and turn a propane torch on and off in my house. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put it in the yes, middle I'd like of the fireplace. like to turn a propane torch on and off so, in your for house, For safety, too. and uh, just watch it and watch the propane torch turn on and off. Um, I think that sounds like a good time. Sounds like an appropriate way to end, end the talk. So... Um, <laughs> Ultimately, we kind of ran out of time. Uh, it, the glow plug did not reliably light. Uh, I put some big capacitors on and was spark, creating a, a, basically a spark plug over the top of the uh, uh, propane torch, and that worked periodically as well, but I didn't have access to really big caps. Um, so it, it's not, it, honestly, for the Arduino code that we'll, give, we'll release, it's like 40 lines of code to light the servo up and spark gap the thing and basically weaponize a propane torch, because that's what everybody wants to do. Um, <laughs> Conveniently, that's legal. Um, like, I don't know. Like, what he did, whatever. Um, so it was going to mount from the top, sprayed in. It's not complicated. I'm sure you understand physics and Legos and shit. Yeah, we're going to do it in Mindstorms, actually. Um, teachable moments. Uh, most drives we found were aluminum. PS3 drives are ceramic. 
Um, and other, what other ones were ceramic? Um, so there's a Japanese company that uh, I'm going to have to talk to that, and see just how trusting they are of my stupid ass to see who all they supply and what they supply. Uh, but they're one of the bigger manufacturers of ceramic platters in Japan. So I know that they supply the PS3 drives. We'll see what else that they do. So, what? Hitachi. Hitachi. It's, it wasn't no, it's the people that no, make the no, stuff it's the people that make the platters. It's not the people that make the drives. That's yeah, they're totally different. Separate learn, learn about supply chains. It'll be great for you. Um, <laughs> wow. Not nearly belligerent enough. Um, I'm sorry. You'll notice something. When we had the map gas on that platter, the dry platter melted, but the freaking case didn't. Um, cases are really resilient, top and bottom. Like, hard drives are hard, as it turns out. Um, <laughs> that's really what I learned. Like, the name is appropriate. <laughs> Jesus. Um, to summarize, um, woodworking tools... <laughs> This is a surprising one. Don't fare well against metal. Um, <laughs> once upon a time, I was uh, having a little antenna making uh, um, event at my house. No, that's not a euphemism. Um, <laughs> and uh, we were making Yagi antennas. People made Yagi antennas out of like threaded rod and, and copper pipe and um, uh, washers before. Yeah, okay, just humor me. Yeah, it's not complicated. He said a washer like an inch and a quarter apart separated by copper uh, tubing over this threaded rod and you stick it into like a PVC thing with an with a end connector in the bottom and you have yourself a homemade Yagi of some arbitrary gain. Sometimes lost, depending on how bad a job you did it. Um, <laughs> so I had five or six people in my shed. This is my shed when I lived in Virginia, which looked a lot worse than my garage um, and had a lot of sawdust in it. And um, we were all cutting these parts, and I assigned this one guy, I'm like, hey, dude, the bandsaw, you need to swap out the blade and the bandsaw to the metal one, and uh, then cut the all thread, the threaded rod, to like 15-inch segments. He says, okay. And so he's got gloves on, safety. And um, when, he, when I said metal saw blade, he just actually thought, you know what, I'm just going to put on a metal saw blade, as if a saw blade would be made of something other than metal. Um, <laughs> so he grabbed one. And he put it on and admirably actually got it aligned and everything. And then he started <laughs> pushing this thing against it. And like a minute later, I look over, there's sparks flying everywhere, and he hasn't even made his first cut. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, guy? So I walk over and I grab that threaded rod with both hands. Boop. <laughs> it was hot. It was really damn hot, and I had the flavor seared in. I, Ted, I'm on it, man. I appreciate it. What, bullshit that the flavor was seared in? That is bullshit that he, did, he didn't learn his lesson at all, <laughs> actually. My flavor's always seared in. Um, that's kind of, I don't know what the hell. That, yeah, yeah that's, that's not even funny. Um, if you looked at the saw blade when he was done, it was a sine wave. Like, it was, he had totally annihilated it. It was for wood. It was not for metal. Um, metal also gets hot when flames applied. Um, there were at least... Um, uh, a number of times, Shane gets into this in a minute, that I grabbed something that had moments earlier had a flame applied to it for like five minutes, and I'm like, oh, shiny, and I grabbed it. And then I would say, damn, it's still hot. Uh, and then conveniently, the pizza showed up later, and the pizza guy handed me the pizza, and just without even thinking, I said, damn, it's still hot. <laughs> um, the platter, if you scratch it first, the acids are moderately effective, um, but they do still, the ones we were using that we got, you know, again, retail, going to your local suburbia, you know, wasteland and buying stuff, um, it, it burned through really slowly. Um, aluminum, uh, oh, crystallized, that's a curry point. When they hit about 800, they're nuked. Uh, glow plugs get hot if they don't even glow. <laughs> um, if you apply current to something and it gets hot, it doesn't necessarily have to be red hot to be hot. You know, like everything you ever put on a stove, you know, pans, they're hot, but they're not red. Um, it didn't really dawn on me when I'd been applying to a current to a glow plug for a while, then I grabbed it and um, seared the flavor said, in. Damn, that's still hot. Uh, fun facts, um, no, it's still hot. <laughs> She, she, Jane kept asking, do, do you think we should put some safety goggles on for this? And I'm like, ah, uh, yes, yes, I think it's a good idea. Although, what well, was really funny, we didn't put it in, he was trying to um, pipette, fancy term. Um, anyway, pipette, give me a definition. Put my finger over the straw. Yeah, like a ear drop, like you use like capillary, you know, whatever, and you pick water, water, whatever it is, up in a little thing, you just dribble it. In this case, it, it was battery acid. Yeah, and he's got battery acid, and so he's trying to pipette it with like a little tiny t uh, hose, and then he's got these big rubber, like, you know, um, 
gloves. Dishwashing on. gloves. I'll call them dishwashing gloves. Not what I'd use them for, but that's what I said. Pleasure gloves. Um, pleasure gloves. <laughs> and um, they had like little corrugations on the end of it. And so then he's got a big hose and he's trying to pipe pet with a big hose. And like now we have battery acid like running all over the table. And he's like trying to do it faster. There's battery acid going everywhere. And then he says, fuck it for science. And he picks it up and he just pours it in. <laughs> there we go. Rough. So when he gets frustrated, his sense of risk aversion kind of changes. So, so uh, just a little uh, the uh, not not question. against the HOA rules to blow stuff up. I actually live one lot over from a homeowners association, so I can park the Pinto in my front yard and no one can say shit to me, which is great. Um, I hit wow. So um, my uh, I we hit the hard drive platters with a 12 pound sledge repeatedly to see if we could get them to cleave. Especially after like we figured maybe they're brittle after we fro we we uh, lit them up really hot and they cool rapidly. It might have tempered the aluminum. Uh, no, it didn't. Um, and conveniently, uh, I hit it with a hammer very, very loudly outside, and then my car alarm went off for a completely disjoint reason. And, and um, my wife actually called down and said, "Is everything okay? Because that sounded like an explosion." I'm like, "No, no, no." Keep in mind, she called. <laughs> yeah, she, no. it wasn't actually worth coming out of the house. Like, if I didn't answer, then maybe, you know. Um, so here's the kicker: we failed. We failed in a big, gnarly, nasty way. And you sat through 45 minutes of fucking failure. Awesome! That's what DEF CON Friday is all about. Yeah, woo! One person's woo! excited, the rest of you are like, we're going to beat him up in the alley later. <laughs> we're going to get Lawrence Fishburne, and we're going to redo that scene from 21. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> um, so here's the deal, though. The first person that makes a device that meets the challenge requirements that we have and does not harm themselves or sue us, um, We'll get free access to ShmooCon 2011, 2012, 2012, sorry. Not, not in the past, I don't have my time machine handy, so. Um, we, we like to think that you've learned something from this. Um, at the end of the day, um, one of the things we wanted to underscore is how valuable the information on your hard drive really is. Um, and some of the drive destruction standards that we looked at aren't the most recent things in the world. And there's been very large advances on how bits are stored in hard drives, uh, the uh, density of the bits on the drives, materials that are used, and things like that. Um, and so the cute ways that we destroy hard drives and try to overwrite. Somebody said, I saw on Twitter, they were trying to securely erase their hard drive, and it was like a half a terabyte drive, and they were going on hour 36. Wow. Seriously? Curie point. Like, take out the propane torch, hold it there for five minutes, 800 degrees, your drive's done. You don't need to worry about it. Throw it in the trash, hand it to some random stranger, say, take it, it's dead. Um, you, we really need to examine how we destroy data. Um, you know, for if, if, I mean, there's lots of people that don't, but people in this room are smart enough to. Um, and we like to find ways to do it in more assured fashions that are maybe non-conventional. So if you're interested in learning, we can give you more details about what we did. Uh, we're happy to provide you with um, uh, more technical details. Uh, we are not liable for anything that you may do. And we actively encourage you not to break the law uh, when you do this. And also, this is not to get away from the law. Um, there's, so, anyone live in Central Maryland, major DC area? Yeah, probably, uh, but you don't like to admit it. Um, <laughs> uh, the Montgomery County, um, the guy that runs Montgomery County in the DC area, he, um, he was kind of corrupt. Um, he was taking lots of bribes and things under the table, and the uh, feds had uh, gotten, been on to him for a while. His wife was involved, some council people, a lot of local contractors, that kind of thing. Um, they had his house bugged. And uh, they decided that they were going to finally add enough evidence and they were going to go arrest him. And they found out, the guy found out because the, the cops had showed up at his office trying to arrest him and he wasn't there. Um, and they, he found out that they were coming to his house. So he had his house bugged and things came out in the bug like, hey honey, stuff $50,000 in cash in your panties and flush all the checks down the toilet. Okay, this is recorded for posterity. Plus she had $50,000 stuffed in her crotch. So, kind of, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was in ones. They, they were reenacting that scene from 21. <laughs> Jesus. It turns out that usually by the time they're coming to get you, they already know that they have their case won, so don't do something stupid. Like, deal with the judicial system. Don't delete data for evidence and things like that. That's bad. We're not encouraging that. We're doing, looking at doing this strictly for, hey, there are bad guys out there, and we know pretty well these, this day and age that the bad guy problem is real and we'd like to make sure data gets destroyed appropriately even under large uh, situations of duress. So, that's that. Uh, real quick, once again, cycle override, I already went over this, so did anyone here actually go on the ride? No, yes, one There's guy, yes, one. thank you, sir. One. You, you okay today, you survived all right? Yeah. 
Excellent. Um, I encourage anyone who uh, is able to bike come out next year. And like I said, we'll be doing. Oh fuck, fuck! I'm not even saying anything important, guys. Like, jeez, really? Ah. Oh. So in summary, go sign up for Hack Fortress and go ride a bike. And right. there you go. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, folks.